Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and I'm a development editor here at Adam Matthew and I'm going to tell you about our um, fabulous children's literature and culture resource which is due to publish later this year. Um, so as you can see by the incredible visuals of this um, image from Sleeping Beauty, uh, children's literature and culture will be a resource of richly illustrated primary source literature content written for children spanning the 19th and early 20th century. The resource will contain over 8,000 individual documents sourced from two archives, the American Antiquarian Society and the Winterthur Library and Museum. Within those documents will be a broad spread of formats, everything from books and pamphlets to sheet music, toys and games, stereo photographs and original watercolour artworks. The resource will feature a range of genres of literature for children from early forms of instructional and devotional primers through to illustrated rhymes, tales, stories, chapbooks, novels and picture books, and case studies of classic children's tales such as Robinson Crusoe, Sleeping Beauty and Robin Hood. Material cover themes such as gender roles in the family, perceptions of race, illness and death, morality and behaviour, and education and religion. The materials in the resource will be useful for to a wide range of researchers at all levels. Undergraduates are going to find the material as accessible as experienced researchers will find it rich. Researchers and students from a number of different disciplines will find the materials to support their work here. Uh, social historians can discover the narratives and mores that have permeated culture to such an extent that children were introduced to them, such as gender roles, how to perceive communities of colour and developing ideas about nationhood. Uh, examples on this slide here include the disorderly girl who's morally judged for her messy and noisy and unmodest ways, though she does look like she's having quite a lot of fun in that picture in the top right. Um, other examples include The Inky Boys by Heinrich Hoffmann, which is a morality tale which has been subject to multiple scholarly interpretations, and Yankee Doodle, an illustrated interpretation of the patriotic song. Historians of childhood can combine literature with the more ephemeral material culture of toys and games, such as the dissected map shown at the top there, sheet music and stereographs to help reconstruct 19th century childhood as a concept and an experience. Book historians will also be able to trace how technological advances revolutionised the printing injury, industry and how children's books evolved as a result. Uh, for example, we've included some chromolithographic progressive books um, which show how these images were built up using this labour intensive technique. Um, and that image in the bottom right um, is one of the very, very early stages of um, the first um, layers of chromolithography. Art literature and animal historians will also find a rich seam of useful primary sources here. Apart from being a feast for the eyes, there are several aspects of the resource I would highlight as being particularly special or useful for researchers. The backbone of our selection from the American Antiquarian Society is the McLaughlin Collection. The McLaughlin brothers were an influential and pioneering publishing house whose material is not available in such volumes anywhere else online. We've also included the McLaughlin Art Archive, which is a unique collection of draft illustrations, original paintings, drawings and proof books. To showcase this material um, in the resource, we will include an exhibition that will demonstrate the progression of key illustrations from draft to publication with academic commentary. By way of an example, you can see in the top left um, an original watercolour painting of Santa arriving at a lucky child's house. Um, and on the right, the painting appears as a chromolithographic illustration in the McLaughlin Bros version of Twas the Night Before Christmas. There are rare or first editions of influential children's books, such as Louisa May Alcott's Little Women, Frances Hodgson Burnett's The Secret Garden, and my personal childhood favourite, What Katie Did by Susan Coolidge, which is why you can see the front cover there. We've selected a robust list of religious tracts and morality tales, including a case study of Hannah Moore, allowing researchers to investigate how religion interacted with the concept and, child and childhood experience in the 19th century. We'll also include a video introduction to the American Antiquarian Society collections with curatorial staff, including Laura Wasowicz, who is the hands down expert on the materials and has provided crucial advice on the shape of the resource. We'll also make available an exhibition looking at the evolution of several key titles, exploring how they've been told, retold, translated, imitated, revised and expanded, and sometimes very cheekily copied without copyright permission. Robinson Crusoe is a great example. Um, the bottom left shows an adaptation of the text written with words of just one syllable for early readers. 
And one final thing I'd recommend to look out for um, in the resource when it's published is annotations by the owners. You'll find several dedications and doodles throughout, um, providing a very charming direct link to those children's experience of using those materials. Um, there's a great scribble um, from one child um, or perhaps a parent who's simply written, I love chocolate into one book that I'm particularly fond of. <laughs>